So I really do like Groudon. It has a really weird dual typing. But what I like more is its base stats. Now obviously it's very dominant when it comes to its physical stats. But because it's ground type, fire type, there will be a lot of weaknesses going for it. But just looking at its base stats, one could also argue it's essentially a physical Kyogre. Now, unfortunately, there's not a lot of physical fire type moves in this gen. So luckily Groudon does have its ability for sunlight, which comes natural at the beginning of each battle. That's what's really gonna carry us through when we want those stab fire type moves. So before doing this run and looking at the learn set, it does seem that unlike Pokemon similar to like Rayquaza or Kyogre, legendaries that you can basically probably beat the game with just their learn set, I think there might be room for us to implement some TMs, especially Flamethrower and Brick Break because both could be found in the city Erica's in, one at Game Corner, one at the Mart, and I think having Brick Break and Flamethrower, as you can see, will definitely give it more viability because I don't think Slash, Ancient Power, Mudshot will really help carry us given its weak defenses just because of its typing. And I think we're gonna probably leave Bulk Up alone just so we can not potentially get paralyzed or poisoned, which a lot of the gyms in this gen will definitely do to us. So the best part about Groudon this early on is Mudshot will not just be super effective against Brock, but it also lowers the speed of his Pokemon. So not only will we not get hit for a lot of damage, but we will rip through Brock's team super easily. Luckily at this point, Groudon was able to learn Slash, which was a big deal due to Groudon being so strong physically. And luckily, even though Water Pulse was hitting us incredibly hard throughout the battle, with the help of a strong move like Slash, we overcame the obstacle of her. Similar to Brock, using Mudshot with Groudon on Surge's Pokemon is really all that was needed for this battle. Groudon being so strong and not weak to any electric moves made this battle very easy to get through. Besides, Raichu constantly double teaming and delaying us was annoying but did not stop us. Getting Flamethrower at the game corner as the combo with Groudon's Sunlight ability was very helpful in overcoming Erika. It may seem like we chose to go overkill with giving Groudon Flamethrower, but if you saw how many times it fainted from Giga Drain, do you really blame me for the additional power spike that I chose to give him?
can we all just appreciate the fact that by the time I hit Sabrina, Groudon learned Stab Earthquake? Sabrina's team may be specializing in special attack and defense, but it just fails incredibly short with regular physical moves, let alone a Stab Earthquake in the face. So of course Flamethrower with the Sunlight was what truly carried us when it came to this gym battle. Normally Koga's poison types end up poisoning the Pokemon I'm solo running with, but with Groudon, that was not the case, which was a breath of fresh air. We were able to scrape by and for once I'm just so grateful. Now, question. What can Blaine do when facing a Groudon that is not weak to his fire type moves but also has Stab Earthquake? The answer is to just take it to the face and hand over the freaking badge. That's what he does. Blaine, just give up already, man. Poor Giovanni, he was a criminal mastermind and leader of his own massive corporation. But when a child comes along with a powerful legendary Pokemon with a Stab Earthquake attached, what could he do other than begging for it to be over on his hands and knees? Good luck in life Giovanni, but we're taking your badge and leaving. 